Marco! Polo! Marco! Polo! It's an engineering Armageddon, and this is the battlefield. Leading the teams into the trash are the Junkyard's battle-hardened veterans and arch-enemies. Crash is a math-manipulating nerd who won't touch a tool until the numbers have been crunched. Bowser's his tough-as-nails opponent who builds first and asks questions later. Before they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Bobby, Sue, and I are going to brief our captains about their challenge. All right, guys, your challenge this week is to build machines that can carry your whole team from one end of our obstacle course to the other. But hey, you're not going to be able to see a thing, so that's the catch, guys. Both teams will ride in their blacked-out vehicles. The captains will be given a map that tells them the measurements of the course and where their starting positions are. Then they will race through our junk field site to the X. The closest one wins. But they're not going anywhere until they choose their teams from these six repeat offenders. All right, Bowser, Crash, it is time to pick your teams. Call it in the air. Death. Rage. Yeah! <laughs> Silent but deadly, this fabricator from SoCal may seem permafried, but he's golden in the garage. Mike! Mike is a super strong cop who has his own problems with authority. Shag! This design diva may have a talent for tools, but isn't happy taking the back seat. Need designer. Rosanna! <laughs> the girls are moving up in the pack. I'm telling you. Rosanna is a skilled welder with a short fuse. One wrong step with this damsel of darkness, and you're going down. There are only two left. Who will it be? Johnny! Johnny Swing is a hot-wired welder who's committed multiple junkyard offenses. Kurt. Kurt is a reclusive scientific genius. He's king of the science fair. Just don't ask him to do any heavy lifting. Want to do a little training? No. You sure? Positive. I'm happy. Well, well. All right, Captain. When you guys hear this dong, you've got 10 hours to get it done. Let's get it on. Go, 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 go. go. And there they go. The sooner they blueprint, the faster they'll build. On it, on it. These players have got mad skills, but they're about to get schooled. Right, what we've got to build is a blind navigation machine. It has no windows out, no senses in, except the senses we built for ourselves. Right, the hard bit is working out how far we've gone and whether we're going left, right and about. Blind navigation is like driving in the desert. If all you can see is sky and sand, then it's hard to tell where you're going. Our teams can't use a magnetic compass. They'll be inside metal vehicles, and that would alter the readings. They'll have to create other navigational devices. If you can find it, some kind of trailer. But what I'm hoping is going to be out there is some kind of pallet truck, which will give us a wheel that will give us a zero turning radius vehicle. I, yeah. When you turn that and you go through 90 degrees, you actually go through exactly 90 degrees. You, you don't describe an arc. Right. That's the easy bit. Bowser plans to weld a motorized pallet truck onto the front of a trailer. The pallet truck's main wheel will give Bowser a precise 90 degree turn. This way, they can plot a route on the map and zigzag their way around the course. Um, sounds easy enough. Right, well, yeah, it sounds easy enough. <laughs> I have a feeling Let's it's not gonna be can. quite as easy as it sounds. Yeah. We need a vehicle got to be a runner, because okay. we can't get out and push in this, in this challenge. What I want to build is a thing called a south-facing chariot. And for that, you need a car differential. How big? It can be really small and, and light, if you find one in a golf cart, actually. Okay. The South Point Chariot is an ancient Chinese mechanical compass which uses gears to keep an arrow pointing in one direction at all times. Crash wants to build one using a differential, joined with a chain to the existing differential of a van. 
By twisting the chain on one side, he will cancel out the rotation and keep his arrow pointing in one direction. We're going high tech here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Each team can only send two players out into the yard to get the goods. Bowser's boy Johnny has hit Pater. I see a hand truck here. It's big though. It's beautiful. If you think it's useful, bring it in. If it's a hand truck, definitely bring it in. Did someone say truck? Looks like Mike found one for Crash. Looks like it'll run. I'm gonna give her a go here. Yeah, if it's a runner, drive her on in. Mike! Ah! <laughs> How's it going? It's going great. I say we just put a chain on this, turn this thing around, we'll drag it right in. Okay. Oh, hey. When a pallet truck's handle is pushed forward, the brakes are activated. Rich and Johnny just don't get it. Renegade cop Mike is taking the law into his own hands. What'd you get? Well, it doesn't have a key, so I'm gonna have to uh, hot wire it. It's the junkyard version of police brutality. Go ahead, Mike. I did what they taught me not to do. I had to hot wire it. Okay, uh, take it slow and easy. Don't trash that thing, because we want it running. Still struggling with the brakes, Rich and Johnny drag the pallet truck home. Right, there are trailers and stuff. Go and see if you can find something. Bowser's barked his orders, but the massive mountain of junk isn't making it easy. Got a pop-up trailer. Nope. A good-looking camper. Bowser should be happy. It'd be nice if you didn't wreck the trailer before we got it back in. What are they doing? Johnny, is there any danger of you bringing that in without wrecking it? Will Crash's gadgets guide his team to victory, or will Bowser's simple plan win the day? Find out after this. Welcome back to the junkyard, where our two teams are figuring out how to get through this race with the lights out. Our teams will race through a tricky obstacle course. Sure, they'll have a map, but they won't be able to see a thing. To pull this off, they have to build a direction-finding vehicle. That's beautiful. Sounds like it runs great, too. Yeah, and it's moving on its own. Let's not screw it up. A little street corner here, a little street corner there. Right turn, left turn, U-turn. But uh, nothing blind. You know, I always like to drive with my eyes open. Crash doesn't trust Mike's driving skills, but this is one officer who always gets his man. <laughs> wow. Take this up mm -hmm. and see what room we've got inside. <laughs> we are the trailer trash team, aren't we? What are you guys doing? Camping? Trailer yeah. trash. It yeah. fits. So are you vacationing or are you, are you building something here? What's going on? Well, we figured if we're going to have to do this, we're going to do it in comfort. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge, I know that. But uh, we got a good start on it. We got our trailer set up. We got, uh, I think, most of the stuff we need. We're just going to start cutting and building, and uh, we'll get it done. Golf, anyone? Yeah, this is perfect. Kurt and Mike have found a potential differential for Crash's south-facing chariot device. That's nice and light. <laughs> Kurt, looks like you found your yeah, golf cart, cart, huh? Yeah. Woo-hoo! Yeah. Woo! Holes. Yeah! It's not like a huge, heavy build like building a bulldozer. There's a lot of subtlety to it, so I think I, I pretty much like that idea. Well, looks like about a 12.4. They're probing their axles, and Crash realizes if they don't get the gear size just right, their differential compass won't work. Both teams have got plenty of parts. But they're going nowhere until they start working the numbers. And we wanted to make this operate. This 
has to be at that angle. Okay. Bowser is using a pallet truck with an electric engine to make their vehicle turn. Okay. Pallet trucks are designed to make exact 90 degree turns. Bowser wants to weld his to a camper. The pallet truck will provide power and direction while the camper will act as their shell to hold the team and their devices. We can chalk a semicircle around there, all right, and mark off on it degrees, and that gives us extra um, measuring ac accuracy of, of how far we've turned this. Obviously, math isn't Bowser's strong suit. Good thing he's keeping his build simple. Crash's team has found a working truck. Ready? Now Mike and Kurt are dissecting a golf cart for parts for their differential compass. A differential compass uses a complex arrangement of gears to keep an arrow pointing in a constant direction. Crash plans to use cogs from a golf cart differential, but he'll also need to find lots of gears that match perfectly. You ready on that? Mike has to cut through a lot of steel to pull out the parts, but will it meet their needs? See that? Yeah. Turn that one. Yeah, as long as you're good with this one. I I'm mean. good with this one. Mike's ripped apart the cart. Now Crash will have to hammer out the numbers to see if those gears will work. I think the, this rail and this rail is what supports the floor. Bowser and Rich check their trailer to figure out where to put their pallet truck. I think forks forward is probably going to be the best way. That's what I'm thinking. All right, we can support the front ends of the yeah. chassis on, on those, all right, and then we can just literally drive it from behind here. All right. Bowser's made a decision. So this bit here comes right up against, right up against this. well, right up against those. The cut is critical. Putting the pallet truck in the wrong place could give them steering problems. Good thing Rich is the man for the job. Rich is a, you know, good quiet giant, doing his job beautifully. You say, Rich, can you do, and it's done. Crash has had a moment of silence to consider the golf cart's gear ratios. We gotta scope this out before we put more effort into it, because it might not be flying. That differential doesn't meet his strict standards. Oh, I'm getting 45.3 is the required gear down. Wow! Yeah. I can come up with a better axle than that. That's what I'm wondering. Okay. It's back to the drawing board so Crash can double check his math. Bowser works a little differently. Is this thing going to be able to carry as enough weight with this and your whole team? Yeah. You sure? Easily. So you're not worried at all with the weight issue with your whole team in here? Yeah, the weight issue is not this. a problem. No, this will put it fine. Forward. Have you calculated it or did you just eye it? I've just eyeballed it. Yeah. Ca calculate it. Would you? Okay. <laughs> we haven't got a calculator on this side of the build bay. Got a calculator? No. Got one in my, in my bag. Why am I not surprised? It's two points. So All the cosines and coefficients in the galaxy can't help Crash match those gears. 373 is a Chevy. 371 probably be like a Ford. 370, 373. His team is forced to find another differential axle. This is a mind-boggling build. The junkyard's on-call engineer, Greg Bryant, will give us the 411 on what it takes to drive blind. Basically, both teams are in the dark on today's challenge. Like, tell me, how in the world are they going to do this? They're going to have to build machines that are able to determine what direction they're going and how far they're going so they can go through this course and arrive at their destination. The difference between Crash and Bowser is that Bowser is using accurate steering and then a very accurate distance counter so he knows how far he's gone. Crash, on the other hand, is going to rely on the differential compass. It's complicated to explain, but it's really quite simple in principle. That's easy for our expert to say, but Crash's team might not agree. Let's see a tag. While his boys get busy looking for matching gears in the trash, Crash gets busy with the ladies. This time he's a lot better than last time. I think he's definitely worked on some people skills. You okay? Here. Want to hold you down? You are such a hot woman. Crash? I didn't see any of these out there. That's bad news for Crash. His choices for matching gears are fading fast. We gotta go a nine to one gear down, nine point four to one gear down, and that's just that's nine to a ton one of gear down. All he needs to do is come up with another gear reduction, about somewhere between six and nine, depending on what the ratio is on the the rear end he actually selects to use. Interesting engineering problem. I gotta think about it a little bit more. Crash has hit a wall. But hey, Bowser! Yes. Perhaps he can squeeze some information out of the competition. You building a differential compass? I'm building all sorts of things. I'm not about to tell you everything just yet. Looks like you're on your own, Crash. 
Bowser's team is heading in the right direction. We'll get center point right here. There you go. Yeah, it looks okay so far. They've got the pallet truck in position. Now Rich can finalize the job. We'll just line it up here and we'll weld it. Bowser's practically finished with his direction-finding device. But Crash and his team are still struggling. I'm kind of just um, working on a truck, ripping that truck apart, making holes, and preparing it for these things that are coming later on that the engineers are doing. Rosanna might not understand the science, so she's taking matters into her own hands, prepping the truck for an uncertain future. Don't be fooled, this junkyard mega warrior is all woman. I lost a glove, though. Uh-oh. A lace glove. Oh, oh, I see. So where do we get a nine or 10 to one gear down? Crash's ambitious build is no good without the perfect gears. He's starting to swing wildly at anything, even bike axles. So that's not enough, it's nowhere near enough. Mike and Kurt once again cruise the trash for more parts. While Bowser briefs the team on the next phase of navigation distance. We need some kind of counter. Now my idea for that is to use some bicycle wheels. Bowser wants to use a bike wheel to measure distance. They'll leave the gear cogs attached and use them as the rotation counter. They will determine the circumference of a single rotation of the bike wheel to get an accurate distance measurement. The device will go into the floor of the camper to run along the racetrack. So if we do two to one here, what does this give us? It's up to Sig and Johnny to calibrate. 28. And that's 28. So Bowser, my ratios, just if you're curious, are, are, are definitely geared exactly. Is this math? Today's uh, challenge is a real thinker, and I uh, kind of wish I had more math behind me. Bowser's not the math man. I've sort of um, relegated the dodging of this to you two, so... Huh? Whatever, whatever you come up with, I'm happy with. Uh, I'm looking at a couple samurais. Yeah, it was about 24. Because that does matter. Yeah, 25, 26. That axle is the wrong size, too. Mike's come back empty-handed. There isn't an axle left in the yard. And now they're starting to scope out pieces of the set. It's not too bad, actually. 28. 28, OK. 28 divided by 2 is 14. That's the radius. 9.46. That's a good number right there, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's a little high. I'd like it to be lower. You want to be um, down in the eights? I want to be down in the in the threes. Let's get the other one in a circle, okay? Mike's been looking for the wrong gears all this time. Crash's math has gone upside down. Ooh, man, I don't think you can get a gear ratio any lower than that. No, you can't. If Crash is so smart, why didn't he realize this before? Well, I was kind of surprised that he wasn't on the numbers on those rear ends and making more accurate. You know, here I'm being the accurate one now, and he's not. So I don't know, I don't know what's going on now. Give it enough length so you have. Uh, the way to... Something to tie into. Yeah, that's plenty there. Sig and Johnny are covering all the angles, designing their bicycle-based distance measuring device. Something like that. Rich is still welding the pallet truck to their camper, while Bowser works on a loophole. I reckon we ought to have a word and make sure it's in the rules that the captains have to do the map reading. All right, because since I've been here, I've been out numerous times and with he's Crash. Never found a and way. one thing he can't do is read a map to save his life. <laughs> Is that why his name's Crash? Yeah. Crash is getting lost in this build. His brain is starting to buckle. Let's work on something else and decide if we want to go forward on this or not. Putting it off isn't going to get his differential compass built. We've got chain, we've got rope, we've got gears, we've got lots of stuff in the yard you can do that with. It's not like we're asking him to do something like cold fusion. What happened to the differential compass? It's a tricky piece of mechanical Are you, engineering. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is Crash trying to tell me that something here is too technical for him? <laughs> is that what you're telling me? Is that oh, what I'm noticing? Crash is telling me that this is too technical for him? Crash's brain has put on the brakes. No one else can build the compass. What is he going to do? Bowser's testing his team's newly motorized camper. Well, it goes backwards and forwards. Let's see how, let's see how it goes around corners. This turn is crucial for their navigational strategy. That camper isn't going anywhere. Ah, uh, oh wait, wait, Bowser, Bowser, stop for this yeah. mechanism, though. Get that. It's not going side to side. Yeah. You're locked in by these four points. They've welded the pallet truck in exactly the wrong place. This could be big trouble. All right, teams, we're halfway done. You've got five hours left.
Five hours left. Both teams are way off course. Crash calls an emergency meeting. I'm just worried about looking at this and saying, you know, I could sink 10 hours into this and still not have a functioning system. His team has nothing to navigate with. And Bowser's not doing any better. Yeah, I don't quite know how we're going to manage this. His steering mechanism won't turn at all. Problems are getting bigger. Yeah, and they it's getting shorter. They always get bigger. This wasn't a problem I was expecting. You can't drive off the middle if you're supported at the front. The weight's got to be on this wheel in order for it to drive and turn properly. His team has to start all over again. I think the only thing we can do is to move it all further forward. Damn. We've got to make a team decision here whether we go forward with a differential right. compass or not. We have to build a 9.4 to 1 gear down. We can do it with two stages of bicycle chain, but it's going to be a pain in the butt. Crash doesn't have it in him to build the differential compass with the gears they've found. I think our, our compass is probably going to be the most important thing. Mike seems sure that Crash just doesn't want to do the work. I'm trying to do a whole lot of nothing still. <laughs> same, time, think, same thing as last time. He just runs around doing a whole lot of nothing. I think he's caving in. I think he's giving up. He's within just a, a little bit. He's going to have a really valuable instrument that's going to help him keep his direction. It could take to build the thing for a long time, or it could just not work. It, it, what, could, take, what is it could take a long time, and it would, it would still have some pretty significant drift factors in it. His team is pushing him, but Crash still won't budge. That we may not want to trust it, even though we've spent... We, we've and what spent. are the other options? How many other options do we have? Rosanna just said the magic word, options. Crash has another plan up his sleeve. I want to build a radio direction finder. Pendulum called a Foucault pendulum. I want sonar. Wow, what a comeback. Crash is back in the game. The flexibility here, if a system goes down, we're still, we can still fight. It sounds complicated, but all these devices could turn this race around. All right, right. yeah. The red team goes for it. Everybody's working on stuff that's, uh, that's mission critical, and we're, gonna, we're just gonna rip into this. Um, the scary thing is, if I don't win this challenge, if Bowser wins it, I'm gonna look like a fool. Because this, you know, electrical, acoustic, systems engineering, that's my specialty. That's what I do in real life. And uh, so I better do this one right. I'm going to look like a stupid fool. Teams, you've got three hours remaining. Three hours remaining. Oh, it's coming down to crunch time, baby. Let's just put this up on the hoist um, and see where we need to cut it off. Bowser's team has to move the pallet truck forward and cut off the front wheels. Watch out, guys. The camper is starting to fold. You're not going to lift that hand truck off the ground, guys. The one-ton pallet truck is still welded to the front of the camper. The hand truck's coming off the ground. We're going to have to lower it, then we're going to have to cut this off. Disaster averted. I'd rather we haven't had this particular problem, but there you go. And we'll guard those. Crash has a new shopping list. Yeah, and transistor radio. Mike's back out to the yard with Kurt close behind. They've got a lot of stuff to dig up. Hello, I hear you loud and clear, sir. The pieces of the puzzle are beginning to come together. Hey, Kurt, it's Mike. What do you think about a couple of uh, orange traffic cones? A couple of what, say again? Can you hear me now? Oh, for the megaphones, yes, definitely. Bring them on in. Now Crash is playing with a car horn. Here's your audio beacon. This is Crash's idea of a sonar device. He'll create a fixed beacon with a honking horn and listen through a traffic cone connected to a garden hose. As their vehicle moves, he'll try to pinpoint the horn's position and work out in which direction they're traveling. Well, I get, well, I get myself dizzy. Okay, I honestly don't know where I am. That just works. That works so well. Crash breaks the tradition and takes matters into his own hands. Yeah, it'll work. I hear the ocean. You do? <laughs> this junkyard sonar could be a long shot. I'll stand right here. You put it somewhere in 180 degree arc and I'll find it. Mike drops the horn somewhere in the junk. How's that? <laughs> it's right on. Right on? Right on. Yeah. We have sonar! Teams, you've got two hours remaining! Two hours remaining! Two hours? What's gonna happen? 
Gatunk, Gatunk. What on earth is that connected to? Bowser and Rich cut a whole new hole for the pallet truck. Bowser, yeah. Rich works quickly. This fix could put them back on the right track. Pop her down. Let's hope this fits. Now that is much better. But does it turn? Bowser's going for a test drive. Stand clear. Yeah, central pivot right there, Bowser. Our middle that pivot axis, point's which, right in the center. Which is what we wanted. Right. It works. They're off to the races. Right, so you cut those off about there. The forks on the front are now dead weight. Enter the executioner. Hey, Bowser. Yes. How's it going? Have a look. Hey, not bad. Very nice. Got power socket for TV, air conditioning. Groovy. Sofa, a couple of beds, you know. Room. Yeah, I, I, crew comfort is very important. Drinks cabinet, you know, that kind of thing. Great, yeah. Well, we got, uh, we got uh, the radome cut out, and we got, uh, we got to mount the radome soon. Yes. For the electronic navigation systems. If you build an electronic navigation system, I'll be really impressed. It's built. Is it? It's built and it works. Does it? Yeah. I'll believe you. <laughs> There's thousands and thousands wouldn't, but I'll believe you. <laughs> Still out in the junkyard. No such luck. No usable bits. Kirk's pulling more parts for Crash's new system. There's still a lot of stuff I'm looking for. I mean, we've got so many different systems. There's a ton of different fiddly bits. I've got a bowling ball. Might not be the best weight for a focal pendulum. Not to be heavier than that, but I could bring it in if you want. A bowling ball makes a perfect focal pendulum. Do it. The team swings into action, installing Crash's second directional system. As soon as I drill a hole through, if you can feed that up. Okay. Crash is having his team attach the bowling ball to the roof of their van. He hopes that the heavy pendulum will keep swinging in a constant direction as the van turns. But Foucault pendulums are really designed to be in one place. So when you try to travel with a pendulum, particularly in a truck, <laughs> in a truck if you start and stop, that's going to mess him up. So what he's going to have to do is, is start his pendulum swinging and just use it for his relative angle changes so he can just measure those. It's really not good once he's traveling. Radio, radio, who's got a radio? Maybe Crash's third device will be more reliable. Oh, look! Mike's found the key part, a radio. AM reception changes depending upon the orientation of the radio to the transmitter. Crash is hoping the radio signal inside the van will change as they change direction. Maybe he's on another wavelength. Well, we might not know where we're going, but we're going to be getting down. Kurt is extremely happy. He's, he gets to do his thing. Yeah, I hear a voice from above. So he's just like a little kid. Hello? Just hopping around, being all goofy. Slurpees for everyone! Working on the radio direction finder, which will be like crazy submarine. I mean, the whole thing's gonna be pretty kooky in there, but I, I think it'll be kind of fun. <laughs> With the steering complete, Sig and Johnny can finish their distance indicator. Oh, we're getting there. This wheel will allow them to measure the distance they need to travel. We need to figure out how much that one turns now. When the large bike wheel spins, the teeth on the cog tell them how far they've traveled. Every rotation of this up here is 30 feet, dead on. I've used some more power forward position, uh, doing doing uh, the heavier, bigger, more important welds. But I like the I like the tinkering uh, aspect of what I'm working on. Happy uh, coming up with the math. Um, I think I can take care of it. Now, is the measuring devices made? You just need to put them in. Yeah, they're all they're all so made. They're made. Yeah, they're ready. So just so you don't have to like start. From in fact, we can show you. It's going you, in right now. All right, you, let's you do stay it. There? Nice. Look at this. Look, it's totally made. Oh my god, you guys are kicking butt, aren't you? Right, we can lift it off the ground for when we want to go around corners. And then uh, for every one turn of this, we go 30 feet. You, so you've already even worked all this out? Oh, yeah. Wow, you guys are like over, really over 30 going feet, for it. Over 30 feet, we have 3 eighths of an inch of slop. Yeah. Slop. Wow. When we come to turn corners, this one gets lifted off the ground. 
and then that one gets dropped onto the ground and then we can measure how far we've turned left or right. Okay, so you're gonna have a person manning the, the, the forklift. Yep. You're gonna have somebody manning this, making yep. sure you know what's going on and, and picking it up when you need to. And then, what, two people on the outside kind of watching what's going on there, or? One person watching that one, one person watching this one, one person doing this, and me out the way doing a map reading. What, what, do, you, what do you want to work on now? Uh, Crash has his own distance dilemma. What we want to do is have means of measuring forward progress. And my idea is this. This is probably grounded. All we need to put is a lobe here and a wire uh, yeah, here. Yeah, and just go, it just sorts. Yeah, and it turns yeah. on and off a of light. Crash is hot wiring his drive shaft. As the shaft turns, it'll nudge a contact switch, which will activate a light inside their truck. Look at that. Yep, nice and bright. Great. If they know how far the truck moves every time the drive shaft spins, the number of flashes will tell them how far they've traveled. That's about four feet per flash. Flashing and back, too. That's good. So that's it. The ball, the radio, the horn, looking at the differential, or the- Looking at the, the, dri the drive, drive shaft. The, the drive, drive shaft. shaft. And then you got your speedometer. Oh, okay, yeah. The buggered speedometer. We got a broken speedometer, it? a buggered radio, a couple of traffic cones. Sounds to me like you guys are broke down. Almost from the get go. <laughs> Does this thing even run? Oh yeah, that would be it a drove great... in here. Okay, it drove in here. so this does. It. So you got that going for you. All right, it sounds to me like you guys got some work to do and maybe some more ideas to come up with. Well, That's just personal. We'd love to. What do you think we should be building? I think you should come up with something that just you know helps you. What what are, what are you going to do about your as far as your turning radius? How we'll big, we'll how big an effect that. is that? We'll have to measure that. We don't know how big it is. How are you going to do that? Well, just take it out in the field and turn. And just measure it? And measure it. With tape measure or something or what? Yeah. Does this sound actually normal at all, you guys? It sounds like it's really going to work, seriously? Yes. The ball yeah. and the horn? Yeah. Do you not ball know how to follow a sound? Video. I do. Okay. But it just sounds a little, I'm just a little skeptical. Why 10 inches? Just about inches. That's what he wanted. Bowser is grappling with Johnny and Sig's distance calculator. Why not a foot? That's what I said, a foot. Why 10 inches and not a foot? Because this doesn't come out easy. Because it's 80 inches. Feet. Makes sense. Only asked. Don't just hate a smart ass. <laughs> it's better than a dumb one. I feel a bit like a spare part, to be honest. Um, I'm looking around for a job to do, and every time I look for a job to do, somebody else is doing it. I can be mounted. We can, can mount this now, I think. Right. Well, he sticks with his strengths and muscles into the build. Ready? Good. That's excellent. Look at that. Is that right? That is absolutely perfect. Looks like Bowser's team is just sort of, everybody's got a job to do and they're doing it. And they pretty much put all their eggs in a couple of nicely designed, well thought out devices, but should those fail, they have no backup. Crash has a lot of instruments, but I'm, I'm afraid he's gonna get confused with so many instruments mm -hmm. on board. If one of them fails, he may use another one to sort of get his sense of direction back, but I think it'll be imprecise and he's gonna wind up all screwed up. We got our bowling ball, we got our cones, <laughs> we got our radio. So, uh, we'll see if it's gonna work. It's too bad we can't feel out in front. And Crash's team isn't finished yet. I mean, if we only have a feeler that's like this big, we could even have like a couple well, of other holes think... we could stick them out of if necessary and just cover them off. A couple of holes in the truck, some PVC piping, and the team might literally feel their way around the course. In theory. In theory. <laughs> So how many devices have you actually got? Uh, I've got six nav devices. So you've got six devices, and how many people have you actually got to look at them? Four. Four. All right, team, finish up. You've got one hour left. I said time is disappearing very quickly. Hey, Bowser. Yeah? Can I go on to working on these? Yeah. Bowser copies Crash and decides to install one more device. All right. When Bowser drives in a straight line, these wheels will turn at the same speed. If the camper starts to turn, they'll see the wheels begin to rotate at different speeds. How's that? Perfect. We should take the tools out before we close this thing up here. Crash starts to seal the back of his visionless vehicle. Ow, 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 ow. Are you bleeding? No. Wanna stop? Pinning it round the front and stuff like that. Bowser's pitching his light tight tent. I like it. Anybody home? No. All right, guys, you have 30 minutes left. 30 minutes. Left. Three, two, one. Go! Put your cool down. Good work today, guys. Go home, get some.
some sleep. Tomorrow is the blind race. Crash's blacked out beast is ready to roll. It's so loaded with direction and distance finding devices, his team may get lost in the shuffle. Bowser's pallet truck driven camper has battened down the hatches. It's got solid steering and a few good wheels, but will this be enough? Our teams could be lost in space in this junk field race. Our captains have designed vehicles to race through an awkward obstacle course. The catch is, they can't see a thing. Crash and his cruisers are going head to head with Bowser and his bruisers. We're letting the teams fine tune their navigation gizmos at a location hidden from the course. We need a start point and end point. Bowser's testing for distance first. You reckon, you reckon that's 54 feet there? I do. Well, come and have a look. 54 feet. Oh, I am. Outstanding. Watch out, it's gonna roll. Crash is also testing his distance meter. One blink of their drive shaft light indicates one rotation of their wheels. It's about a foot and a half. Not bad. Next up, direction. Right there. Okay, everybody ready? Right, that's bang on 90 degrees. I'm happy with that. Talk to me. What do you got on the radio? I'm not getting much directionality out of anything. Crash's radio directional device has already got Kurt scrambling. I'll set the sounder out somewhere and you uh, zoom in on it. This is pretty good. At least the sonar system is sound. All right, Greg, you've seen both machines in action? Yep. Who do you think is going to take it? You know, Crash's machine may be a little bit delicate. A lot of different systems have to work together. Bowser has, uh, I think, a more straightforward approach with the way that he's doing his turns and, and driving straight ahead. So I think that Bowser's machine may be a little bit better. Let's take a quick look at the track. The obstacle course starts here. They have to find their way through the junk to these exits. Whoever's the closest to the X by the time the horn blows wins. The best two out of three wins the challenge. The teams are ready. The vehicles are ready. Let's load in. Crash's crew takes their positions. Mike is at the wheel while Rosanna mans the sonar. Kurt is working the tricky radio directional device and Crash is master of the map running his navigation calculations. Bowser's team is in place. Rich handles steering while Johnny counts off their distance with his measuring wheel. Sig's got both eyes on the side wheels to keep the vehicle straight, and Bowser is manning the map. All right, team! On your mark! Get set! Go! And Bowser is on the move, spinning towards the course. Stop, back, stop, back, stop, back, stop, back, 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 back. Okay, stop. right there. Uh, okay. The red team is slow to start. Crash has to do his calculations. Bowser's found his way into the course. Come on, yeah, guys. straight, straight. Where are we at, Johnny? Almost 70, 70. Oh, no, nope, 90. Hard to left, make it so. Crash's team is finally underway. They've got to turn around before they can head into the course. Two. Mike's flashing light is helping the team count their distance. And stop on 35. Three. Five. Five. Done. Captain Crash's Enterprise is firing on all thrusters. Heck, dropping the beacon. Crash is deployed as a horn. horn is going. Spot on. Okay. Trust the instruments you've built. They're working fantastically. Look how fast he is doing this. I mean, yeah, he's halfway done with the course. Turn it down a little, slow down a little, just so I can catch up. 120, one, wheels are 135, off a bit. slow down a little. Very little to your... Left. No. Nope. Nope. Right. Right. Okay. Confusion is setting in. We're either 90 or 180 degrees off. <laughs> Kurt's radio radar is giving him some false readings. Okay, maneuver number three. Straight, 11 clicks. Seven, Seven eight, eight. Foucault's going nine, crazy. Nine. The pendulum is yeah. out of control. Seven. Oh, 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 Crash has hit the obstacle. Oh, no, it's dying. What else could go wrong? Listen, their horn stopped. Uh-oh, Crash, the horn is dead. The sonar beacon was their most reliable backup system. All they have left is Crash's map calculations. We have no sonar left. Crash can tell it's all up to him. No. Bowser's blues are heading into their own storm. Uh-oh. Uh Bam. Oh, uh, we've hit something. Right, what have we hit? I'll tell you what we've hit. 
We've hit this. But they know what they should know where they are. We need to do a left turn, brakes. Left turn. Go to a certain turn. mark. Go to a certain mark. What is he doing? I'm not sure. The camper's turning backwards. Bowser must be doing the math wrong. If we've hit that barrel, how far is that barrel? Off there. Can Bowser get back on course? Yeah, and we're going to turn and come this right. way. Right, 45 feet. Right, it's okay. Show me the one we hit before. Keep going. Bowser's really over a barrel now. Bowser's team is halfway through the course, but they're now heading the opposite way. Still stuck, it's up to Crash to turn his team around. What do you want to do? Back up 16. 14, 15, 16. 16. Let's go forward 15 feet. Crash is pointed in the right direction. They're back on course. 19. OK. Next is straight five clicks. Crash is on the move. But Bowser's way off course. Coming up on 20, slow down. Uh-oh. Hit some more barrels. burning barrels. We're right here. We got to be right up here. Oh no, no! They're, now they're going. They've completely lost their sense of direction. Back to the start. This is a guess now because I'm completely lost. That's got to that be is so frustrating. Has for those guys. to be frustrating. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Is Bowser giving up? Well, 13, 14. 14. Crash is cruising. He's through the course and on his way to the X. Straight 17. Go for it. Full steam ahead for Crash. But where is Bowser going? Turn right. You want to measure it or just go for it? Just go for it. What is Bowser doing? Is he starting over? Bowser's playing blind man's bluff. Slow down, slow down, slow down. 14, 15, 16. What the fuck? Oh my god, they've set and punched it. Jeez Louise. 17. Stop engines. That's it. Crashes hit a homer. But Bowser's still out in left field. Three, two, one! God knows where we are. Jeez. Oh, wow. Miles and miles. Back to where we started from. You landed right on top of the edge. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> While the Red do a victory dance, Bowser's gang sing the blues. Our count was wrong. Our count is totally off. But it's best of three, so there's still time for a comeback. Welcome back to Junkyard Mega Wars. Things are spinning out of control in this blind alley rally. Bowser's souped up camper's gone south. The gear works, but his bad math cost them the first heat. Crash's direction-finding gadgets have failed one by one, so he's stuck to do what he does best. He did the math and won the race. If you just lose your way once, you you've do. had it you completely. It. Heat number two is about to begin. Are you going to clinch it? I huh? hope so. Are we going to sweep? Are we looking for a so. sweep? Bowser has seen the error of his ways. He's fine-tuning his calculations and trusting his gear. Let's, Let's go for it. it. Come on. Crash's crew is fixing their temperamental horn and focusing on their math. Good luck. All right, Bobby Sue. Are you ready? Rossi, we are so ready. On your mark! Get set! Go! Crash's team is first to leave the line. Five forward. Five. Next one, 19 clicks right. Crash works his magic with the map. 930? While Rosanna hones in on the horn. We gotta go for 39 feet. 39 feet. Bowser yeah. is hungry. Bowser is on the move. Yeah. Watch these wheels. Um. Next, straight, 11 clicks. Seven o'clock. Here's the beacon, here's us. About right. The sonar and the distance counter are working perfectly. Left, 17.5 clicks. One, two. Both teams have entered the course. Crash is coming through the side while Bowser takes the closest gate. Both teams are neck and neck. Bowser's right on course. We're going this direction. We're going 155 feet. Veer a little to your left. 40. We're halfway there. Then a right 19. They're cutting this a little tight here on Crash's side. They can't make that turn with that truck. One. Uh oh. That's a barrel. We think we hit right here. So just keep going forward. Yeah, just keep going forward. Keep going forward, okay. Just pull How many? 
Uh, it's supposed to be five. How many did we get before we hit it? One. One? Wait, wait a sec. Wait, let's get this right. The, this one... The right's a little bit ahead. We need to cut a little bit to the right. A little bit to the right. Okay. With Bowser advancing, Crash is forced to make a decision. Okay, go for it. Two. Three. three four, four. Five. We still need to do our same distance up there. What is it? Johnny, what is it? Crash's team is picking up speed. 17. 17? Seven. Cancel. 27. They're into their last turn for the race to the X. 26. The next is a 17.5 left, please. We're making a right-hand turn. Ready? Yep. Go. 16. 17. 5. Okay, 17.5. We know we have to add 5. Uh, so start rolling. Right, reset, reset. Bowser makes a final 90 degree turn. He can smell the X. How far are we going? Whites up, you got Whites 50 up. feet. 50 feet. Let's go. Right. Right. Oh. 20, 21, 22, 20. Oh, oh gosh, look at Bowser. Oh, oh. The two trucks are face to face at the X. It's anybody's game. The teams are toe to toe. Who's going to take it? Bowser's going to win this time or the game's over. Three, two. What? Right, hold on, stop. Wait. Stop. Stop engines. Listen, we've made it or we haven't made it. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate your efforts no end. If we're in the right position. Not no, sure right over there. there. Going out, guys. And wow. wow! Get out here and take a look what you guys did. Woo! <laughs> Woo! And I mean, this tire Woo! went like, went like yeah. that and you barely <laughs> missed it. You guys, yeah! yeah. You guys ran that last one perfect. If you got it close, you had a chance. But crash, victory, you.